Hello, flying penguins and friends from all over the world. All right, today I want to talk to you about something I mentioned in the last video uh, that was how to hang out with Jesus in the garden or how to hang out with Jesus in the spirit. Uh, so go check that one out if you want, because I think that one, I love being able to hang out with Jesus. But in that video, I touched on the imagination just just briefly, and I want to expand on that a little bit today and really begin to address the question, number one, is our imagination good or is it bad? Because depending on who you're talking with and what circles you're running in, uh, it can go either way. And I think, unfortunately, many within the church are almost afraid of the imagination um, and afraid to really use it and expand it. To be honest, I think most people that are afraid of the imagination have no control over it. And so their imaginations run, and it's typically not healthy uh, with what it's running with. But let's, let's think about and talk about the imagination for a few minutes here. Number one, the imagination is really powerful. If you think about it, it is extremely powerful, and it, I believe it is a beautiful gift that we should use more and more often. And I think when you really listen and talk to either inventors or even like Nikola Tesla or Einstein or really any inventor that is inventing things, I would challenge you, go talk to them and ask them, where do they get their stuff? Where do their inventions come from? Because like these guys, Nikola Tesla and every inventor I've ever talked to, and in fact, I just talked with a lady Saturday night who was inventing artificial intelligence and she was able to imagine even the software architecture in her mind and that's how she created it. Nikola Tesla will tell you all these things just came to him. He imagined those things. Most inventors and most things that are created, the chair you're sitting in, the chair I'm sitting in, this microphone, everything, the iPhone that we're recording with, Almost every single thing was thought of in the imagination before it ever became a reality. So your imagination is extremely powerful if you use it properly. And really a determined mind, if you set your mind on something, set your imagination on something, you will, you will achieve it. You will, you will make it happen. You know, willing. So, sports has has done this for years now, right? The imagery, imagining yourself successfully completing uh, a a shot in basketball, and it's and it's going through the mental game and that getting that imagination going. I remember I, a friend of mine did pole vaulting for a while, really a challenging, challenging sport, and he had to imagine himself going through all the motions, right? And I remember. At the time, talking to some folks uh, at the church, I, I was going to, oh, that's new age, that's imagery and, and all those things. No, it's not, right? God created us. God created everything about you and me. He gave us the minds and the, the ability to have an imagination. And it's absolutely critical. But unfortunately, I think the church really kind of puts a negative spin on the imagination so often. And often attempts to shut it down or diminish its role. And really, they try to, typically the Western church especially, tries to say, oh, if you attain enough knowledge and cram enough knowledge in your head, it's like this, this hope that it just will drown out the imagination. That's just, that's wrong thinking. I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you why in a second, before you get all, all ruffled up yet. But it doesn't work. You can't drown out your imagination. It doesn't work. You can try. It won't work, though, because we were designed with an amazing imagination. And, and I find a lot of people within the church are almost terrified of their own minds. How crazy is that? You almost live in a prison because, like, if, you know, if somebody hooked up a a, a matrix plug in the back of your head and could project your mind or your imagination on a big screen in front of everybody, most people would be absolutely terrified to have that happen. 
But what that tells you is that's what's happening. That's what's going on in your head all the time, right? And unfortunately, too many of us just try to shut it off and say, oh, I'm going to ignore that, right? But you can't ignore it. It's still going. And that's where I think some of these negative aspects come from. I think it's fear. A lot of people can't control their own mind. They don't know what to do with it. So they try to shut it off. And that's not healthy either. But let's look at what Scripture talks about, right? And so Scripture is pretty clear, I believe, that an un unregenerated mind is evil. And that's all it can do. It, it thinks of evil things and it, it crafts things. And I think we tend to focus on that negative side and say, see, the, the mind is bad. You know, you can't, you can't use it. Don't, don't mess with it. It'll get you in trouble. That's an unregenerated mind. And I think w- what's amazing is we, we actually see Jesus uh, touch on the mind and the power of imagination and the power of thought. Right, because remember when he's just hammering the Pharisees, which he tends to do a lot of, just hammers these guys. Remember, these were the religious folks of the day. These were, they were Gnostics, really. If you think about it, they they thought that the attainment of knowledge was like the pinnacle of of religion and spirituality. And Jesus came in and just whacks them, and he basically says, you know, I don't care. Right, it doesn't matter that you're not actually acting on these things and and you know uh, actually sinning in your behavior. He says, "I tell you, even the thought if you think lustfully at a woman, then you've already committed the sin." So if you think about that, what Jesus is saying, he's actually elevating the value and the importance of your mind and your imagination to basically saying that. Just thinking of something is as if you've already done it. So let that sink in here, because this is a critical point that Jesus is making, I believe, on how powerful this is. And most men, and I think women as well, you know, if you really think about it, some of those images that you allow in your head, they are vivid and they are real and they can often get a physiological response, especially if, you know, if there's fear involved or, I mean, even sexuality involved, right? Fear, especially even thinking of something and imagining it, my heart starts to race. I can start to sweat. People will have panic attacks, a physiological response to their own imagination. So tell me it's not powerful, right? And ignoring it is a joke. It doesn't work. So stop trying to ignore your mind. Use it as God intended. And God said, Jesus said, take every thought captive, right? So Paul talks about this. Take every thought captive and and submit it to Christ, which is really have the mind of Christ. And so I'm telling you, to constantly remind yourself of how wretched you are, how big of a sinner you are, is 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 actually terrible for you. I know it sounds really religious and sounds like, oh, I'm really humble. Absolutely not. I'm sorry if, if that's how you've been taught, but that is crazy. And that is why, honestly, there is a huge amount of depression within the church. I see this especially with the youth, that there is a huge amount of depression, but nobody wants to talk about it, right? Because, oh, that's that's something must be really wrong. Yeah, there's a lot wrong because you're schizophrenic in your mindset, right? You're saying on one hand, oh, I've been saved by Jesus, right? Oh, I have the mind of Christ. But then on the other hand, you're told constantly how bad of a sinner you are and how bad your flesh is and, you know, that, oh, you've got to eradicate that sin. I agree. We can't let sin reign in our mortal bodies. However, If you're constantly reminding yourself or being reminded about how big of a sinner you are, that's what your mind gets set on is sin and wretchedness. And then that's all you can think about. And that's what your imagination runs. And you start to have scenarios going on in your head. And eventually it becomes this loop that you can't stop. And that is a not, that's not a healthy mind. And that's not a good place to be. And that is not having the mind of Christ or setting your, your mind on things above. Because what, what Christ says is that you are a new creation. 
right? That's the beauty of, of the symbology of baptism is that your old self died with Christ, right? There's nothing of you exists anymore. When you rise to life in Christ, you're a new creation, right? We've talked about this in the past, in the past videos, but you are a brand new creation. Stop trying to act like a resurrect the dead guy because he's dead. Quit it, right? That means your sin and your, your old self is dead in Christ. So stop trying to revive it. Leave it alone. Put your mind on things of the Spirit. So again, let's look at what Scripture tells us about this, right? And so if we look at Ephesians 1, verse uh, 118, and I talked about this in the last, last video, but I love it, right? And this is out of the Passion Translation. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Passion Translation, go check it out. It's awesome. Um, so it says, Ephesians 1.18 says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding your flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, that is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy ones. Okay. So what what Paul is saying here is that. He wants, he wants the light of God to illuminate our imaginations, right? The mind, that's your thinking, okay? Until it produces an experience, until it has a physiological response. So he's saying that set your mind on this as you encounter the Father in your mind and in your imagination, it eventually produces a physiological response and your behavior begins to reflect your thinking and your mindset. And the result is a, a more holy behavior and a more Christ-like outward appearance as well. But it flows from the mindset and then out through the body. Now, what's cool is um, the word for imagination often, oftentimes is translated the heart or the mind, but it's typically translated the heart. So when you hear and read heart in scripture, most of the time it's talking about actually the imagination. And uh, the word for this, the Greek word for this is uh, dianoa or dianoa. Sounds like you're annoying somebody, but uh, it's it means the imagination, the mind, or the understanding. So it it talks about deep thought, probably the faculty of the mind uh, or its exercise. So that's a, that's awesome. But it's talking about your imagination. The next verse is Colossians three two. It says, "Set your minds on things that are above, into the heavens, not on things on earth." Right. That's part of the regenerated mind. And again, this is a slightly different word for neo, uh, and it, but this one means to exercise the mind, to entertain the mind, or have sentiment or opinion. Um, it's to interest oneself and to set your affections on. So this is even more of an action word of saying, actually, you know, set your mind to exercise, right? So when we're praying, this is this is one way to do that. Or when you're meditating on the Word of God, engage your imagination on on the, the Scripture that you've been uh, really reading or walking through, right? Because it, if I don't do that, how can I how can I set my mind on the heavens? If I don't use the Word of God, right? So I mean, Revelation four is an awesome one. I mean, think of yourself there. In the midst of the throne. So you take Revelation 4, the description of the throne is incredible. Try to imagine what that would look like. And then take Ephesians 2 6 and say that actually you are seated in Christ at the right hand of God the Father in the throne. So take Revelation 4, Ephesians 2 6, and now mash them together and imagine yourself in the midst of that in Christ. At the right hand of God the Father, with, with all of that, with, with all of the rainbow around, the thunder, the lightning, the, the, the presence of God, the sea of glass in front of you, my goodness, can you imagine that? I hope that you can. You know, and the other thing is, you know, Jesus also told his disciples that he only does what he sees the Father doing. Now, clearly, God the Father wasn't cruising around 
physically in that day. So Jesus is not talking about physical sight here. He is talking about his imagination. And he's saying, I see in my imagination or in the spirit, which I believe are all basically the same thing. He says, I'm seeing what the Father is doing, and then I respond to that. Again, the imagination. It is awesome. It is so powerful. So the more that we set our minds on things above and imagine the glory of God, the presence of God, who he has created us to be, the more our minds get excited and the more our imaginations get excited. And really, to be honest, this is where your inventions come from, right? If you think back when you were a little kiddo, most young kids have amazing imaginations, right? And you can entertain yourself with a box of cardboard going to the moon and have all kinds of adventures. But as we grow old, because our our mindset is more of a Greek linear mindset, you're kind of told, ah, you're a daydreamer or, you know, you you shouldn't allow your mind to do that. We're going to think logically here. And it kind of shuts down the mind. But again, man, you talk about any inventor or the the folks that really make it, and I mean, do really, really well in so many areas, they're typically the daydreamers. They are typically the ones that are thinking up crazy stuff in their minds. Look at science fiction novels. How much science fiction technology that was imagined by the writer is now reality and true sci-fi. I mean, we had ray guns 50, 60 years ago before they were ever existence. We had laser beams in sci-fi before they were ever in existence, right? So many of those things. And I believe that the church, we as Christians, we should have the the most incredible imaginations and use of the imaginations in, in order to invent new technology. Because if we're engaged in the heavens, in our imagination, in the heavens, in our spirit, then we should be seeing some of the amazing things in heaven and trying to recreate that on earth. How cool would that be? I hope and pray that the church becomes known for inventions and imagination and technology. How amazing would that be? And so one of the things we we tend to do with with the flying penguins and as we meet physically together is we we want to engage our imaginations and we practice this we 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 test it and so last night we actually uh, had had them in and we were we were just talking about actually a lot of these things and and how incredible God is and you know the fullness of God and that when God spoke it wasn't just an audible voice it it came with his fullness fullness behind it, which means that there's color in his voice. There are there are fragrances in his voice. There's mathematical equations in his voice because he created it all, right? He spoke creation into existence. So that means everything in creation that we see came from his voice. That's an incredible thing to think of. Uh, but one of the brothers is is an amazing doctor and so we had a uh, another one of the guys we had we had two issues last night with an elbow and then a hand that was really in pain and so um we prayed for the elbow first and it had you know it had water on the elbow and it was, it was swollen and nothing happened all right so sometimes when you pray you don't get results but i expect results every time we pray and so we finished up with with this this one brother and we began talking about that because one of the other guys that was praying with us said, hey, you know, to the doctor, I'll just call him doctor. Hey, doc. He said, hey, doc, when you were praying for him, I saw in the spirit this fire behind you and it was the fire of God. And it was, it was just, he said, I've never seen it this intense before. And he said, it was just this fire and it was trying to come through you, but it was like you were blocking it from behind and you wouldn't allow it. And it was amazing because the doctor said, I kind of felt something. He said, but you know, his logic and his training took over, right? And his knowledge of the human body took over and he went to logic instead. And not to say that the training is bad. That's that's not to say that at all. But I think he's actually can be more effective because he knows it at the cellular level what's wrong, and then he can bring the spirit into it. And so, 
what was awesome was we said, hey, let's just pray this into you. And we talked about his position in heaven and who he was in Christ and how it, being seated in the throne and in Christ, how he prays from the authority of the right hand of God the Father, from the authority of Jesus Christ, as if when he prays, it's as if Jesus himself was praying. Think about that one. That one is is crazy. But that's the authority that we have and the position that we have as sons and daughters of the king. We pray with that authority. And so we pray and allow the, the presence of God to completely flow through us and out from us because we are the temple of God. It's within us. And so we prayed this over him. And as we're praying, and he kind of he told us a little bit afterwards, he said he had a vision in his imagination, uh, had a vision of sitting right next to God the Father in Christ in the throne room. And it was it blew his mind uh, with what he saw. And even he, as he was sitting on the floor, he said he felt the weight of God. And oftentimes, um, and I'll see it sometimes, like almost a, almost a round ball of energy. And I know that sounds a little strange, uh, but he could physically feel this thing sitting in his lap. And it was just, it was the glory of God. And you you should have seen his face because it was just, he was beaming with the presence of God and just loving it. And so as we finished praying, as he explained it to us, you know, I shared with him, I said, you know, doc, that is not your imagination, right? You think it's just your imagination, but you are actually there. That is, you're engaging the spirit of the in the mind, and that's showing you. God's revealing where you actually are in heaven in the spirit. And so, the other one of the other brothers had uh, his his right hand had been aching and hurting, and it hurts all the time for him. And so I was like, all right, let's let's go back and let's practice again. Let's pray for this hand. And so Doc, you know, grabs a hold of his hand and kind of prays for it. And this time he's, instead of begging God, right, he's speaking directly and commanding the the hand to, the pain to leave and the hand to go. But nothing happens still, right? And and so the guy that was being, we were praying for was like, eh. he's wanting to say yes, but, you know, these are all pretty practical guys, right? They're not, we don't want to be super spiritual. It's like, did it work? Yes or no. It's okay to say no. And it didn't work. And so as Doc was praying for his hand, I saw the fire now actually on his back. And, but it was still wanting to flow. So it was now uh, part of him. But he was he was wanting and trying to flow, but it wasn't wasn't able to. And so we stopped for a second and we regrouped. And I said, "Hey, Doc, let me share what I saw for you." And what I told him to do, I said, "I want you to." And he felt kind of some a little bit of heat on his back, which was really cool. Uh, and I said, "All right, Doc, I want you this time when you lay hands on on his hands, I want you to see the fire of God." flowing through your body, through your arms and into your hands and and into the 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 brother that we're praying for. I said I want you to see it and I want you to I know and I'll use the word because people are or will go nuts, but I want you to channel the the energy of God, the 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 power of God, the essence because you're not channeling from some other place. It is, it's flowing like a river, right? You are allowing the river of God that is within each of us as a believer. You're allowing the river of God to flow out the fire of God. And so he's like, okay, I got it. I, I, it makes sense now. And so he closes his eyes and he is imagining this, this coming through. And as he's praying, the guy that he's praying for is like, whoa, it said, okay, something's different now. And he's like, I, he's, and he's sharing. He said, I'm, I'm feeling tingling from my hand and now it's coming all the way through my body. And then all of a sudden he's like, is it really hot in here? Cause it got really warm in here and you could feel, I could physically feel a heat coming off of, of the dock and, and the, the brother that he was praying for. And it, and so, I mean, he's, he's literally, he is physiological, having a physiological response and feeling this now happen. And, so after he finishes praying, you know, he, the guy's praying for, he's like, 
whoa. And he's just looking at his hand in kind of amazement. And he's opening and closing. And he's like, the pain is gone. He's like, that's, that's just wild. And the whole premise and the whole point of me telling you this is that when you engage yourself fully, right? If I just pray words, that's all I'm praying, right? Now, God is powerful. And I've seen him just with somebody with no faith, just say, uh, in Jesus name be healed, right? And it's like, bang, they are healed. But that's a kind of a one-off kind of a deal that I've seen. I'm, I'm talking, how do we engage as sons of the king, right? As sons and daughter, how do we positionally pray for folks? which is I pray with confidence, the full confidence, knowing that the fullness of the deity of God lives inside of me and is integrated with me and flows from me, right? I'm not God, but I am now integrated with God as a new creation. And so that river of life can flow through me if I choose to, and I can hold it back. We can we can stifle it very easily. But what we what God was showing us last night is that when we engage our full imagination, when we engage our spirit, which oftentimes feels like the imagination until you begin to understand it, but when we engage it and see his presence flowing through, it changes everything. And so it, it was an amazing, amazing encounter and, and such a night and day difference between uh, doing that. And what I love is with the doctor, he knows now, I mean, he has the, the, the amazing training that doctors get. He knew exactly what was wrong physically and what was happening. And so now he can imagine in the spirit, he can see where the presence of God is taking those, those things and going into the cellular level. He can see the inflammation because he knows what the inflammation looks like physiologically as a doctor. So I believe he's even more effective from that. And so I want to challenge you guys to fully engage your imagination from your position in Christ at, in, at the throne with God, right? Pray from that perspective and fully engage your, your mind, body, and spirit in that prayer and watch what happens differently and see the river of God, the fire of God flowing through you. And if you don't see it, then use your imagination to see it happen and flow as you're praying for somebody. So the next time you pray for somebody, I want you to do that. And you don't even have to say anything. And the cool thing was, Doc did not say much this this last time. He simply watched it and watched the flow of God come out and, and heal one of the brothers. It was It was awesome. So I believe as as Christians, you you have the mind of Christ, but you have to set your 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 imaginations on the mind of Christ instead of the junk of the world, right? Because that's what comes out is what you set your minds on. So you have been regenerated. Your mind has been purified in Christ. It's now time to start activating and using it instead of trying to ignore it or or imprison it. Because that doesn't work, guys. I'm sorry. And I, and I know most of you who are struggling with this. You know that. It doesn't work. So trying to cram scripture in there to counter it, that doesn't work. Take scripture, read scripture, and now engage the fullness of your imagination with the glory of God and setting your mind on those things above. It will change who you think that you are. And it will, you will begin to walk and believe as you already are, but you will begin to walk as a son or a daughter of the king and your behavior and your actions and everything will flow from that. It, it'll be amazing. So share, share your results in the, in the, in the comment section. Try this out and let me know. I, I know a lot of you guys are already doing that. So please share your experiences, share your encounters, because I learn from you, uh, hopefully as you learn from me. This is iron sharpening iron within the body of Christ. So uh, please share your experiences in the comment section. Let me know um, and we will, we will talk again the next time. So have an awesome day uh, and we will talk again. Thanks. Bye-bye.